Welcome back, everybody. This is John and Debbie Morris with Integrity Training Systems on Real Talk 93.3. We're having a great show so far. Excited again to have Josh and Rochelle Kahneman on with us, dear friends of ours, talking about what it takes to have a godly marriage. I'm going to pass it over to them pretty quick here. I want to kind of talk about the role that a husband and wife have in a marriage and, and the difference between a king and a queen and the importance of both. So just kind of talk to us a little bit about what you mean by that when you guys define that. At the end of the day, there cannot be two. I mean, Josh and I are very strong personalities, both of us. Yes. But at the end of the day, you have to have a leader. And it cannot be two people battling for that leadership. Sure. Yes. Even though sometimes it probably does feel like that because I have a super strong personality. Yes. At the end of the day, if Josh makes a call and he said, that's it, like I, I've just made my mind up, then that is where I have to step back. Sure. Because in our marriage, it's set up like the king and the queen. So Josh is the king. You know, I'm consider myself his most trusted advisor. That's awesome. So I have the key to his heart. He's going to listen to me differently than probably anyone else. He's probably going to hear my voice louder than most any other person. And That's so right. I have a big responsibility to backing him up, also not leading him in the wrong in a wrong way yes. because of my own selfishness. So I have to operate in a way that has him in mind, but ultimately it isn't my decision is not the last call. So having an understanding of that as a wife like I feel a huge piece of significance in our marriage by being able to be that to him and all of those things to him, you know, not to mention that we do work together. So we yeah. are, we play so <laughs> many roles together, right, yes. exactly. you know, he'll be like, you know, I'm going to tell you this cause you're my best friend, but my wife doesn't really like me to talk about these things. <laughs> and so that. he'll like That's joke so with good. me if That's it's, so you know, good. all these different <laughs> That's things. That's amazing. <laughs> I just love that statement. We do the exact same we thing. We really do. We're going to be like, hey, I'm going to tell you something business. It's not great, but don't tell my wife. You yes, know, like, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. It's very yes. funny because we play so many roles together. Yeah. And so we try to, you know, keep it lighthearted and jokey yeah. and stuff. But yes. um, at the end of the day, uh, Josh is the king of our marriage. He is the final call. Um, sometimes I don't love it, but at the, but it is, I do have a duty to back down right. at the point that he says, right. I mean, and we'll get to the point where we're like, you know, I'm like, but, 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 and he'll be like, that's it. Honey. But I like that's that you it. said most trusted advisor. I think that's a really great perspective because I do think that some females will get a check on that and they're like, no, 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 no one's, no one's king over me. But like, mm -hmm. hey, if you can just humble yourself and actually respect that, that you are his most trusted advisor, like God will use that and he will grow you guys in such a way that you will always feel protected. You will always feel safe. You will always feel provided for. Like your life will feel complete when you open that door and you release that need to feel like you are the leader and you allow your husband to do that. It's, it's a transformational moment. So I do respect that that you are his most trusted advisor. And like, that feels amazing to be that for someone. Also, if there was a king, right? What position would you wanna have next to him? Right, exactly. Which the reality is there is a king, you know, and it's Jesus, yeah. you know, right? And so he's given us the spouse. And as women, he has shown us like, that guy, he is leading you. He is protecting you. He is covering you. He, he is the provider. And we are not like his servant, but we are his most trusted advisor. And so let's battle together. You know, mm -hmm. let's do this thing. Yeah, I mean, don't, we're not, it's not twisted as like, I'm the king, she's the queen. No, right. sure. But we compromise a lot in the sense of who wants it. If, if I want something more than she doesn't want it or the opposite, that's how we kind of settle. Yes. So if she wants something more than I don't want it, but she wants it more, we'll usually go that way or the opposite way. Yeah. Yes. We set that up from the beginning of our marriage. We said, you know, this is going to be the tiebreaker. If you can sense that I want this more than you don't, then you have to That's a really yes. good make way a compromise to, to me. And if I can sense that he, his dislike or his want either way is more than mine, then I have to be able to back down because it's not as, I, I mean, it's simple. It's not as important to me as it obviously is to him. Yes. Right. And sometimes yes. it takes like, but I want, but I want, you know, you go back and forth through this thing. Yes. Yeah. It's really easy to get hung up on always thinking about what you want, but I love that there's different varying levels of that. 
So if you want one direction 20% and he wants the other direction 100%, I mean, his direction is the direction that should go in. But I think a lot of times people don't realize the difference in the levels of that. So it's just what I want versus what you want. And that's really not a way to look at that. Right. I see a lot of people because I have 52 employees. Yeah. They work against each other, couples. Right. Right. And they're not their biggest supporter. And they don't realize that their entire life could catapult if they had a teammate and who is your best trusted advisor, teammate, person that wants you to succeed versus your spouse. Right. And a lot of people that I deal with from just dealing with people um, are always um, not working with their partner at all or they're not setting the standard for their family. Yes. And um, that's where I see most of it is, and that's just America in general, I think. It's just, or the world probably, but we need leaders. Yes. We need fathers. We need men. We need people that just stand up and set a standard so high um, that everyone around them, you you, you know, you're going to get the eye rollers, but you're also going to get the people you inspire. And I'm doing it for the people that I inspire. Right. Um, down to every bush in my yard, to the lines in my yard. I love it. I, yes. It's how you do one thing, it's how you do everything. That's right. From your fitness to your health to your marriage to the, uh, you know, leading. Because, like, there's a statistic, and you know the numbers better than I do. But if the father goes to church, the man goes to church, it's somewhere in the realm of, and I can't be quoted on this, but somewhere around 80% a chance that your children will yeah. serve God. Right. And if it is a mother bringing their children to church, it's somewhere in the 20% for yes. one child. Wow. Right. Wow. And so I just feel that the, the, so like I look at it like, what if you had a camera following you around every day? Right. When, when no one else is looking. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so you have to set the standard with the things you put in your body, the things that you put in your brain, the things, you know, all of the exercises. Do you read the Bible? You must not want it real bad. You don't want a healthy marriage if you won't even you know, put the wisest, the best-selling book ever in front of you <laughs> right. or your marriage. Yes. yes. Um, you know, people reject that a lot. And it says in the Bible that the most important thing you can get is wisdom. Yeah. And that's what most people are lacking. And then the more wisdom you get, the more you realize you don't know. Yes. Like, I don't that's know. Right. I love that. The, the, right. the, the, the more I learn, the older I get, the I more I realize that. I don't know. Yes. And then I'm like, great, I have so much more to learn. Yes. Yes. I always tell people that. I'm like, the second someone tells you that they are the master of whatever it is they do, they're no longer a master because they've probably given up on learning. Yeah, right. And if they've given up on learning, they're not going to continue to be someone that you want to follow because that person is going to continue to learn. Yeah. You know, we were yeah. talking about this here recently, like what it what it takes to be considered a master of your craft. And I just got to thinking about how long I've been doing this. I just had like a moment of like age acknowledgement in my second life, you know, because I was a police officer and then I did what I did now. And I was thinking about it. And I was like, I have trained over 23,000 hours of one-on-one personal training. And there's still people that come in that I'm going to work with. And I'm like, I don't have a clue what to do with you. And I have to go online and I have to research and I have to look things up. But I have to be willing to do that. I can't just say, and let me just try to throw them into a mold of something else I've done in the past. Right. You know, and I think, again, like you said, it's like that bleeds into every aspect of your life. And so if you're if you're not treating the person at home with you, the best that you can treat them and working as hard as possible to keep that unity and to keep yourself on the same page with your spouse. I just have to believe that that's going to fade into multiple other areas of your life. I think like Josh, what you're saying with what you see kind of with, you know, just the different people that you work with. One of the things that I see, you know, I talk with people on their nutrition every day. Um, Believe it or not, relationships are one of the number one reasons why people don't stay on their food. (laughs) They have a fight with their husband. And so for whatever reason, they needed to eat chocolate, you know, and so I hear a lot more than really what I'm necessarily looking to hear. But I'm trying to try to get to the bottom or the why of why they keep, um, you know, losing commitment to a healthy lifestyle. And so then I end up just like consulting someone on advising them on how they can handle a marital situation. But People keep score, and I just don't God, – God's actually called us to not do that, not mm-hmm. just in our marriage, but just, just in life because we don't want to have resentment towards anyone. We, we're not trying to count up a list of all of the wrongs that have come against us. There's no gain in it. I mean, there's no build. We're not stronger because of it. So I think in a relationship, 
um, keeping score and identifying, you know, I've done these and I've done this and I do this for you and I do that for you. Uh, there's just truly no gain to that, you know. So I, I think if we can team up together, lead by example, you know, create a scenario where our children are watching a relationship where people respect one another. And yes, there will be some candid conversations. And it's the way we come out of those candid conversations that really actually guide, that will really actually guide our child. I mean, our child has witnessed some very serious situations, but that girl is going to be a leader one day because she has watched us bond together and just really fight right. through it and, and with not, the Lord. And not yell and scream at each other and yeah. not throw stuff around the house. But she can tell we're both very serious on what we're talking about. We both have a strong opinion on something. And she's watched it be hashed out. And, and blessing that's has another, come because of it. That's I mean, another thing, you know, to Josh's point about, like, the world, you know, setting a higher standard. You know, it's like if we're not willing to hold and set that standard, like, your kids are watching you. Mm-hmm. You know, the next generation, the people that are going to be leading this nation when we're older and incapable of taking care of ourselves, like they're watching you. And so if you think they're not picking up on how you're handling situations, how you're treating your spouse, how you're talking about them, how you keep your life in order, you're wrong because yeah, you're creating legacy, that right now. It's a true legacy that you're that you're leaving J- just the same way with our daughter that we are trying to lead a healthy lifestyle in front of her. You know, uh, we we keep a clean home. Uh, we, you know, all the things that we do. We have a hard work ethic, a strong work ethic. We want her to see that. You know, together we unite. You know, and we face life together, and and that's just so important. And our team at work sees that. Um, we took a, our, uh, some of our team members to Florida this year, and collectively, they don't know this, but they came to me individually and said. One of the things we enjoyed the most about the trip, they didn't say this together, they said it individually, was watching you and John live life together. We've seen you do business together, and we've always respected that, but it's living life together. You laugh, you joke, uh, you, you're protecting each other, you're caring for each other, you're, you're, you're attending to each other's needs, and you're sensing what the need is even before it happens. Each person was blessed by that. And that blessed me because some of them still need to get married. You know, they're still they're still single. They're going to get married. I pray that they find someone like that. And I pray that they respect themselves enough to wait until they find someone like that and they don't settle and that they truly gain that type of love and 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 relationship that I guess we've worked really hard to be able to accomplish. Life isn't perfect. I'm not gonna try to sit here and say that it is. Um, but I'm certainly blessed by by the love that I have for my husband, for sure. This show is brought to you by Integrity Training Systems. For more information on what we do with Integrity, take a look at IntegrityTrainingSystems.com. For gluten-free, dairy-free baked goods delivered to your door from my personal bakery, take a look at Sophie's Bakery. And for 100% grass-fed meat, the only meat that the Morris family will eat, take a look at FedFromTheFarm.com.